It's the same old school, it's the same thing Same tears on it, we play Maybe one day we'll see We're one big family Like it's one Greetings and welcome back to Discussions with Indigenous Education. So right before the break, we started to talking about this DNA. And again, you were referencing that my brothers and sisters do not have the same 50% of the DNA from you as um, at, at the same 50% DNA. Right. Right. And so let's get back to the Ancestry.com website and let's, talk, let's see what they're talking about. Again, I think we're talking about Indigenous American DNA now, if you're following us on their website. Okay, so this is, although the criteria may differ between nations, no tribal nation considers Indigenous American DNA to be a legitimate claim to citizenship. So it's in part, this stems from traditional beliefs that kinship networks, family connections, not ethnicity or DNA, determine who is Native American. And I would say that that would be an indigenous way of, of being and existing, except for the fact that the United States stepped in and required this blood quantum thing, <laughs> right, to be, to be able to be in Native American. So before, if you were to follow this, it didn't matter what color skin you were. It didn't matter what kind of hair you had. It didn't matter how big your lips or your nose was, if you were Native American, you were Native American. If you're a part of this family, then you're a part of this family. And it didn't matter whether if your family lived way across on the other side of, of, of the landmass, if they came and they came and they joined your family, they're part of your family now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what tribe they came from, mm -hmm. they are now part of your tribe. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so, so it, it, again, it was, it was family connections and, and, and not. <laughs> <laughs> and not this blood, blood quantum, quantum, you yes. know, and not the laws of the, and uh, a conquering people, right? And, and that's one thing we have to remember, right? These, these laws are, these rules, these stipulations, these policies of who is and who isn't, who can be and who can't be recognized has all been dictated by our conquerors. You know, like, if you're indigenous to the United States, then our conquerors are dictating to us who is and who isn't a Native American. And it has to stop. We have to start to recognize that we have a right to acknowledge ourselves, right? Particularly when we have the his history, right? Which we, you know, we begin, we, we offer to um, a group of people, you know, from the Southeast that history has been omitted to the point that other indigenous tribes and peoples on this same continent don't know that we existed, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they take the history of our conquerors as fact right and the baseline for how we should be developing and it's just totally incorrect right um let's you know we're talking about the dna right and again the traditional ways that a tribe would offer that connection is not the ways that we go about it now and this dna testing is being used to make a lot of money and also being used against people's um, for, for, you know, stating that they're, they have Native American identity if they don't fall in line with the colonial standards, right? And so that's why we're doing this. Let's read a little bit more because it's more stuff to get into. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, while indigenous American DNA cannot be used to determine tribal citizenship. Stop. <laughs> why can't it be used? Because the colonial system said it can't. Not those tribes, Right. I just want to make sure that we understand mm -hmm. that, you know, again, this is something that's being dictated on us. It's not being dictated by us. Go ahead. Okay, it says that it can be vital in assisting Native American people who were separated from their tribal communities. Right, and I agree with you. And also, you know, for those indigenous peoples whose history has been omitted, as, you know, you take that, you'll be able to find individuals that were part of your family tree, you know what I mean, before the great migration, as you know, um, from a colored people's perspective, that is, you know, in other uh, in other ways where a lot of 
um, Negroes from the South moved north, Chicago, Boston, Canada, <laughs> you know, New York, <laughs> Philadelphia, you know, things like that. I just was saying that, you know, there's a way for us to use this information to reconnect back to our descendants, you know, our, um, our kinship and our, and our bloodlines that are still here that, that go back to those indigenous peoples that have been omitted and are being um, dismissed as a part of mainstream education. Yes, now, um, now you can't be afraid, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now, because now I know that there are many people that are, that, that are skeptical about the DNA and about the results and things. Mm -hmm. However, we know that this is a fairly new it's a, it's a, it's an, a, a scientific novelty mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. that they are still learning from, but we can also learn from this information. Right, it can't be scared. Be yes, yes, mm -hmm. and and again, um, you can. It, the more the more of your family that does take the testing, the more information that you get. So you get a little bit more information from each individual that takes that 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 takes this. Mm -hmm. And so again, if, if you are if, if you are just a um an only child, like if, if I was just an only child, I would not know about the Native American ancestry that is that is there within my family. You know, but having that brother, that brother just happened to take the test then I, I know that it is there. Now, there are other people, like, like maybe even like Elizabeth Warren when she took her test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it didn't show up, but that doesn't mean that it is not there. It just meant that the percentage, the, the percentage of DNA that she got from the person that was carrying it didn't pass that on to her. <laughs> right. And, and that's, all, that's it. That's it. You're watching Discussions with Indigenous Education. Greetings, and welcome to Indeed's Moments in Indigenous Education which focuses on historical facts which have been omitted or forgotten. Please join us for today's topic. Today's topic is blood and native identity. In 1897, the Smithsonian Institute's Bureau of American Ethnology wrote in its annual report that, and I quote, the blood of the Southern Negro is unquestionably Indian." End quote. The Bureau, whose focus was on North American Indian cultures, was established in 1879 by Congress. According to the Bureau, and I quote the full quote, as the coast tribes dwindled, they were compelled to associate and intermarry with Negroes until they finally lost their identity and were classed with that race, so that a considerable portion of the blood of the Southern Negro is unquestionably Indian." End quote. So you may ask, if it was known that the blood of Southern Negroes was unquestionably Indian, and Indian blood is what defines who an American Indian is, why is it difficult for dark-skinned people to claim their native identity? The answer lies in colonial laws, which made slave blood negate Indian blood. You're watching Discussions with Indigenous Education on Philly Cam. All right, so we're about to get into the juicy, the juicy <laughs> parts of this thing, right? And, and really break down why it is that your um, DNA test may not show that you're Native American, even if you know for certain that you are. You got verifiable proof that you are, right? And it's still not showing up. Why? So, you know, they tell us why. And so let's, let's find out. Okay, it says, Ancestry does not break down DNA results by tribe, mm -hmm. but we do provide an approximate geographical region, which they identify as the indigenous Americans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> All right, so they don't break down tribe, right? And so, you know, that might be one, that's a really good reason why, you know, the, you know, you shouldn't use the DNA testing to become a tribal citizen because the, they can't tell you which tribe you came <laughs> <Right>. from. <laughs> and so there you go right there, right? And so um, that's one thing. But my question is, okay, so geographical region, 
<laughs> you know, and so, okay, what regions do you test, right? And, and then um, which regions do you not test? And does that make a difference in, you know, uh, particularly for, you know, certain um, groups of indigenous peoples from the United States? The re if they're not testing your region, would you show up, you know, in their test, right? <laughs> and so let's talk about it. Let's, um, so they said indigenous America, right? And so I'm going to assume that that's America, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and it says here. Americas, so does that mean North, North and, and South? South. Yes, right. America all the way. All the way up and down, <laughs> right? It's plural. And so we're talking about the Americas from the top to the bottom, from Canada to Chile, right? And so let's, let's start to explore these, this process here. Okay, well, um, I'm not sure about all of the regions, mm -hmm. okay, but what I did do is I have the North American regions okay. that, they, that they test. All right, well, yeah, that would make sense for us, right? Yes, <laughs> okay. Okay, uh -huh. okay so, uh, so let's just go over these, all right? It's they... They test this as indigenous Haiti and Dominican Republic. Okay. Okay, with the islands. Okay, okay, so they went straight to the islands. They went to the islands. All right, all right. They went to uh, indigenous Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. It says indigenous Cuba. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then these are the spots in the indigenous Americas, north. Okay. Okay. So now when we start to talk about that, so we're now, talking about North America right now. North America. Okay. So now the um, so they had the islands. Now they have North America. Okay. And they have in Mexico. Okay. They do the Baja Peninsula and the Southern California coast. Mm. Okay. So mm. they get the uh, the Baja Peninsula for California. Mm. Then they say Central and Southern Mexico. So within Southern Mexico, they do. Get Texas in there, okay? Somewhere in southern Mexico, wouldn't in, that be in, northern uh, Mexico? Well, central, central, uh, central. Oh okay. no, you know what? No, those. No, I think no. Those are just all the regions, okay? In um, in central and south, uh, right. okay? In central and southern Mexico, okay? And including yeah. the Yucatan. Okay, yes, including the Yucatan. Okay, so there's nothing there in in, in the United States at all. Okay, okay? I noticed that they do uh, Guad uh, uh, Guatemala. No, no, uh, Guantanamo. Southeast Guantanamo, okay. nor, uh, Western Guantanamo. I just thought it was interesting <laughs> that they would do Guantanamo. Yes, okay. Mm. All right, and then they have the Central Highlands, Northeast Mexico, and Southeast Texas. Okay, so okay. now we're getting into the United States. So now we're getting into the United States so where they California, do... California, and New Mexico, and, and um, Texas. Texas, Southeast Texas. Okay. Okay. All right. Then they have a section where it says New Mexico and Southern Colorado. Okay. So they do that area over there. Okay. okay. So we you know that Southern, that West, uh, Southwest. Midwestern Plains, yes. right? Yes, Southwest. Yeah, Southwest Plains. Yes. Okay. They do Northeastern Mexico and South Texas. Okay. And so again, so we Texas have is Texas, hit pretty good. San Antonio, they have their, yeah, um, um, that looks like San Antonio, looks like the only place there in, in South Texas that they have listed. Yeah. Okay. And then they have South Texas listed again in the uh, Tamaulipas in South Texas. Mm. And they have the Rio Grande. You see the Rio Grande Valley okay. in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see. And, also see uh, Southwest Arizona. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the Mexico and Southwest Arizona. And okay. And that's it. That's it. Those, those were all the sections of the United States that they check. Now they do have uh, Alaska, you know, so okay. they do, you know, they have, have that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And then of course for the island, for the, you know, that they have for that. For Hawaii. Right, mm -hmm. but as far as the mainland uh, United States, those were the only places that we saw. So, 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 hold up. So they don't, <laughs> because they use the term Cherokee, we will too. They don't. They don't test the Cherokee. They don't, and you know, they Twenty Three and Me doesn't either. And they don't <laughs> test any tribe east of the Mississippi, especially not in the southeast. No. And so, for those individuals that are interested in using the Ancestry.com to see if you have Native American ancestry or not. If you think that you're indigenous to the United States, 
um, on the East Coast, right, east of the Mississippi, you can't use any of these tests because they don't test those people. <laughs> right. So there's, yeah, there, there is no blood quantum there for them to utilize. And so, no DNA, I'm sorry, not blood quantum, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no DNA. <laughs> and so, so the DNA that popped up in our bloodline from, that Native Americans came from west of the Mississippi and probably from central, I mean, you know, from Mexico below because that's what they test. Or the islands. Or the islands. Mm -hmm. And so, but, but it wouldn't be able to show that we have any indigenous blood from the east coast at all. Not from Virginia. Not no, from, Maryland. from South Carolina. No, they don't test no. any Pennsylvania Indians. Mm -hmm. They don't test any New York Indians. Mm -hmm. They don't test the Narragansetts of Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. No, they don't test the Cherokee. What about the Creek? Do they test the Seminoles? No, they don't test the Seminoles. Did you see the Comanche over in the West Coast? Apache? Well, now they may be in some of the testing from the Southeast, I mean Southwest, mm -hmm. you know, where they use, the, you know, so some of that, that area. So that may they may be covered again. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lumbee? Uh, no. Yeah, that's North Carolina. No, no. Now, no. none of the Powhatan con, um, uh, tribes or Confederates. Uh, no. And so the point is, is that if you're on the east coast of the United States, and if you're east of the Mississippi, and you feel like you have some Native or Indigenous ancestry that comes from that portions of these lands, they don't test those people at all. So you're never find your indigenous or Native American DNA from that region in Especially these Especially the Southeast. Now, I will say that, that 23andMe okay. does go a little bit further, Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. where it says that 23andMe, uh, they do uh, the Great Basin and the Lower Colorado Basin, but I think that Ancestry did that mm -hmm. also. Yeah, they okay. did. Mm -hmm. But they mentioned the Great Lakes in Canada. Okay. 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 And then they mentioned the Northeast. They mentioned the Northeast? Okay. Yes. But still no Southeast. No, no Southeast. <laughs> no Southeast. And really when they mention the Northeast, they're, they're really uh, in the New England more so than even New York. You know, so they, you know, that um, New York isn't, isn't considered part of that. Okay. You know, even when they, when they, when they say the Northeast. Okay. You're watching Discussions with Indigenous Education on Philly Cam. Today's topic, 18th century propaganda and African slavery. Propaganda is information, ideas, or rumors deliberately spread widely to help or harm a person, group, movement, etc. A word that had just been introduced into the English vocabulary in the early 18th century, but by the end of the century, abolitionists were using this tactic widely as it provided results. At the end of the 18th century, slavery had become a very hot topic in politics here and abroad. While the newly forming United States depended on slavery to fund the colonies, abolitionist views were becoming more widespread and abolitionist subcultures began to emerge. One such group was the Society for Effecting the Abolition of the Slave Trade a British abolitionist group formed in May of 1787 in London, England. The society worked to educate the public about the abuses of the slave trade by writing and publishing anti-slavery books and pamphlets and creating abolitionist prints and posters. Their most infamous print is the image of the Brooks, an 18th century British slave ship. The Plymouth chapter of the Society for Effecting the Abolition of the Slave Trade acquired detailed measurements of the Brooks, including deck plans, cross sections, and side views. The abolitionists inserted images of prone black people to demonstrate the possibility of how they could be situated. It was a hypothetical illustration, an image that requires one to think what life is like when people are stored this way. It was an image that could carry its message into the minds of those who did not read the society's literature. Images had rarely been used as a propaganda tool in this way before. This image became one of the first political posters. This propaganda was so effective that it has lasted for centuries. 
It has sparked our imaginations to create images like this. It has also allowed our psyches to be so empathetic to African slavery that it clouds the fact that only 5% of the African slave trade actually took place on United States soil. You're watching Discussions with Indigenous Education. There's actually a little bit more that I want to get into before we close it up today. And actually, let's go back into our notes into the third page if you want to, to go back. I wanted to read this. Page. Okay, I'll find it. Okay. And so I'm going to read it a little okay. bit because I think that it really helps us to wrap up this show, you know, um, and explain to us, you know, uh, about this DNA, why we're not there, and, you know, some history as re respects to it. So it says, um, since time immoral, my goodness, right? <laughs> immemorial. Immemorial. Humans have called the Americas home. Huh? From the wind battered islands of the southern uh, pa Patagonia. That? Patagonia to the gentle rolling tundra of the North American Arctic. Humans have Humans may have lived in North America alongside now extinct mammoths and giant sloths as early as 23,000 years ago. If not before, stop. <laughs> right. And so, you know, we want to make sure that uh, we understand, like, it's proper. This is propaganda mixed in and all of this. But they stated some things that you need to consider. They said, this says... 23,000 years ago, if not earlier. It says, if not before. And we know that the migration theory that's um, used to, um, as the mainstream theory of how the United States particularly was populated has a theory that only dates back to 12 to 14,000 years ago with the Bering Strait migration theory. And so who are these people that are here 23,000 years ago? That's over 7,000 years before that migration, if not before, right? And so, you know, I, want, I wanted to use, just, just make sure we reference that and, you know, acknowledge that they will state that there were people here before that that, that uh, migration from out of uh, Asia across the Barren Strait. They know that they have older artifacts uh, on the, uh, that are east of the Mississippi, that are older uh, points, tools that were used, mm -hmm. that are older than the ones that they found west of the Mississippi. Right, and, and just to close it out, because I don't want y'all to feel like we're only giving you half things. I'm going to finish reading this paragraph, right? Uh, but DNA evidence suggests that major migrations into the Americas from the Northeast Asia began around 16,000 years ago. Stop. They're being very specific with that major migrations from that area. So we ain't talking about the rest of this. We're only going to talk to y'all about this one space. And, and, and that way, you know, they can still have you follow the, the, the mainstream line of thought process with respect to a specific, you know, type of indigenous peoples, and that's it. You know, we're not going to talk about any other types of indigenous peoples. Um, and so, you know, and it was these later migrations that gave rise to the most present day indigenous American ancestry. That's because that's what they decided to test, right? And so I just wanted to make sure that y'all understand that historical context matter with respect to these tests too. And when they, you know, using propaganda to sway individuals to thinking one way or not considering other options or possibilities as a form of control. It is what it is. And they're getting y'all money for a lot of, they've been getting a lot of money from this. <laughs> Did you want to explore anything on that topic before we close it out today? Mm -mm. Nah. Did you want to say anything to the group before we wrap it up? Um, no. Yeah. All right. So the point is, is DNA, the, the DNA testing cannot and it will not, um, show you that you are Native American, right? You have to do that on your own. There's rules, there's laws, there's stipulations, all of them controlled by our colonizers. And with that being said, you know, we want to just use this as a uh, novelty item and a novelty tool, not something that you should be um, making your, you, you should be stating your identity off of.
You agree with that? Yes, I do. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, we got some really great shows coming up for y'all. Uh, we got some, um, a new topic that we're going to be discussing that's going to take up quite a few shows. And so we'll be getting back to that. So definitely please stay tuned. Uh, again, this is Red Silver Fox, also known as Renee Sanders. I am Tavis Sanders, also known as Red Tail Hawk. We are co-founders of Indigenous Education. Please support us at indedu.org. And this has been another episode of Discussions with Indigenous Education. We hope to see you next time. One. Peace. It's the same hustle, it's the same thing. Same tears on the we play. Maybe one day we'll see. We're one big family, like it's one channel. It's the same sunshine, it's the same rain. The same struggle just to maintain. Maybe one day we'll see. We're one big family, like it's one channel. Greetings, and welcome to Indeed's Moments in Indigenous Education, which focuses on historical facts which have been omitted or forgotten. Please join us for today's topic. Today's topic, Indian Slavery Laws. Slavery in the Americas, especially in the United States, is a highly toxic subject in which history has not been very kind. Because of its toxicity, it is a subject that routinely gets circumvented. What is even more elusive is the topic of Indian slavery. But if one took a look at colonial laws, history cannot deny that Indians were used as slaves. As early as 1682, Virginia had a law that stated, quote, all Indians which shall be sold by our neighboring Indians or any other trafficking with us for slaves are hereby adjudged, deemed, and taken to be slaves. End quote. Another 17th century Virginia law included Indians in the terminology Negroes and other slaves. In South Carolina, their slave code of 1740 stated that, quote, all Negroes and Indians, mulattoes or mestizos, who now are or shall hereafter be in this province, and all their issue and offspring, born or to be born, shall be, and they are hereby declared to be, and remain forever hereafter, absolute slaves. Meaning that all Negroes, Indians, and their children were slaves for their lifetime. The only exceptions to this law were mulattoes and mestizos who were already free and Indians in amity with the government, or in other words, Indians whose tribe had a treaty with the government. The South Carolina Slave Code served as the model for other colonies in North America. In 1770, Georgia adopted the South Carolina Slave Code, and then Florida adopted the Georgia Code. All of the colony's early slave codes were basically congruent, which is clear evidence that Indians were used as slaves in all of the founding colonies. You have just finished watching Indeed's Moments in Indigenous History. Please join us next time. Peace. We would like to thank our sponsors, the 215 Guys, Philly's go-to website agency for small businesses. Queens United Holistic, located in the 1000 block of Warrior Road in Drexel Hill. One day we will see we're one big